How to know when it's time to replace your hub and drum assembly. How to know when it's worn out, maybe it's borderline, um, some things to look for. We had one of our viewers leave us a comment and ask the question, how do I know when to do that? And I know we've kind of covered that in some of the brake videos, some of the PM, the bearing pack videos, but you know, I thought maybe we need to do a standalone in that. So we're gonna show several examples of drums that are bad. We're gonna show drums that are good. Um, what we try to show our customers, um, you know, here, here's the issue with it. You know, we wanna be upfront. If, if we think it needs to be replaced, we're gonna tell them, hey, this, this, you know, we're not gonna service this. We can't put it back on from a liability standpoint, uh, but just know what to expect. We try to take good pictures. We try to, when we pull them off to show the customer, because sometimes it's kind of borderline. It may need it, it may not need it. Um, then we'll leave that up to our customer in order to make that decision. So we're gonna jump right into it. We're gonna show you several examples and see if we can help you answer the question. The best way, in my opinion, how to spot a bad drum, one that needs to be replaced, is to know what a good drum or a perfect drum looks like and start with that. If you've ever worked in the banking industry or if you've handled large sums of money, the best way to spot counterfeit money is to know what real money looks like, to know what real money smells like. Don't smell it, that could be nasty, but you also know what it feels like. But if you know what the real thing looks like, you're gonna know when something is off. It's the same thing when you're turning wrenches, same thing when you're working on a part from drums to bearings to brakes to all of it. If you know what they should look like in good working condition, you're gonna immediately spot them. So that's the way we train our guys. So we're gonna start with a brand new hub and drum assembly. This is gonna go in a 7K axle. So let's take a look at it. One of the first things is to see if all the wheel studs are in good condition. The mounting surface, this would be what they call the hub face. This is the hub face where the wheel mounts. Um, to make sure this is good and flat, it's not damaged. Another area to look is this area right here. Some hub and drums, the wheel will center off of a cone lug nut. Some will be a pilot centered wheel. Um, so this has to be perfect if that wheel is going to center um, on there. Another place to look will be right down inside here where the bearing goes in or the cap goes in. If you've ever lost one, this will get oversized. Um, from the bearing going bad and it will not hold a grease cap. Sometimes it's simple as that. You may be able to rebuild the whole drum, but it's not going to hold a cap. Don't chance it. I've seen anything from beer cans to Coke cans to paint caps and duct tapes. If you're doing that to get down the road, that's one thing, but, but you need to replace it. Another place to look is on the inside. Now this is brand new, so it's got a very nice machine surface where the magnet's gonna ride. It has a nice machine surface where the shoes are gonna ride. And right here, you can see that chamfer that we talked about in a video or two back. That little angle right there is very important and we'll get to that here when we show one of the larger drums. You can just see the overall condition. This is shiny, but it's not a mirror finish and we'll cover that here shortly too. So this is what a good drum looks like. Everything here looks very nice, very clean. And there's obviously no cracking, none of that stuff. So now let's look at more of the extreme side of it. Then we'll get back to some of the subtle um, things that could happen to it that you may not catch without getting your microscope out. Not really, just a flashlight is about as much microscope as you need. Let's look at this one here. This one I would say is in pretty bad shape. That bad boy has been hot enough where it turned blue. Um, you can see from all the rust, it has lost all of its, um, all of its finish. It has been polished um, due to overbreaking and then it's just chewed all to pieces. This one actually got so hot, it caused the inner bearing um, to, to come out, damaging where the seal would go. So this thing is trash. This is a pretty extreme example. You can see from the outside, this here is not from the rain so much. This is from being so hot, it's caused it to rust. You can see the flaking um, on it as well. That dude was super, super hot when it came in it did lose the outer race. Um, so it lost inner and outer bearing. A lot of times you only lose one of the two. This one lost both, but the customer was lucky. It did not leave the trader. It came in on the trader. The unlucky part was he lost his axle and it was a big heavy 8K torsion axle um, that's not cheap by no means. Here's another example. I'd say this is more common. Um, you can see in here, let me shine a flashlight. See, You can see the shoe surface here it's pretty shiny, it's almost polished. That doesn't necessarily mean that you need to replace it, but before you go back and put it on, you need to dull it down. You need to, you really need to put a non-directional uh, finish on there. You can use sandpaper, just something to scuff it up to where it's not glazed over, it's not shiny. Uh, the other area, it's gonna be hard to tell on camera, 
But right here where this flat surface goes with that chamfer, there's a big ridge right there. So what that means is this part of the drum has been worn down. It has a rim all the way around it. So this will be out of spec. If you were to measure this, it will be on the maximum allowable wear for this drum and need to be replaced. And what, what happens if you don't, the brake shoes are having to get out too far in order to stop. And it can cause some heating because the brake will continue to cut that down. The big area on this one is what we see a lot of the time, probably most of the time. Many times this wears out before the shoe surface. This is where the magnet's been riding. I know we covered that, but if you were to take your finger and feel this, it is not flat. It feels, it, it feels like a mountain range. It's got deep ridges. It's, it's torn up. It's almost to the studs in several places. Um, somebody had repacked this, believe it or not, a shop, repacked it for the customer, said it was good to go. Their brakes weren't working. They come in and you can see the brand new grease it's got in there, but they still weren't having braking. Um, I'm gonna tell you, there's some great shops out there, so make sure you're using some great shops because there's a few shops that are maybe not so great. Maybe they don't need to be working um, on trailers. So that's the main wear items on this. You can see it's been pretty warm. It has some rust. It has some flaking, but you know, if you're, if you're doing a lot of stopping, especially in traffic, you're gonna get some of that. Um, this, everything up here is fine. It's not worn out. Studs look like they're in good condition. Uh, the races are in there good. It's never lost a bearing. You could put a new cap but this would cause it to be replaced right here. So this is the next drum. Um, it came in, this drum is less than a year old. The brakes on this drum are less than a year old. And I don't know if you can pick it up in the camera, but the magnet surface has chewed this all to pieces. And you can see, I'll shine a flat light on here. You can see the glazing. You can almost see yourself in the drum. What causes this is the brakes, you know, they either were never pop properly burnished in or if they were never burnished in, there never has been a brake adjustment made on this trailer. The, the shoes are actually still pretty thick. So when you see, see if I can break some of this loose down in here. That right there is not so much uh, brake shoe dust. That is material off the magnet um, that is just chewed up. The magnet is destroyed. So this trailer will take a complete brake job less than a year old. If these brakes would have been adjusted at you know every 3,000 miles, depending on how hard you use it, um, you know you can get two to five years out of this if properly maintained. This is a fleet company, so they have several people driving it, and they always got it on the road. I get it. Sometimes it's hard to shut down, but it is going to cost a brake job. Uh, the grease in it, you can see, is actually pretty clean. Um, there is a chance they've just been greasing the fire out of it with the Easy Lube, or they may have repacked it um, since they've had that, but it is chewed up and it's going to have to be replaced. Other than that, it looks pretty good. As you can see the outside, I mean, the races look good. Not a, not really any bearing wear. The, the outer bearing actually looked great. Um, that was on there, but this will have to be replaced just for the simple fact it's been under adjusted and over braked. Um, that's one way to know if you get ready to do a brake job, it's been a year or two and you've never adjusted your brakes, good chance you're going to have to replace the drum on that. And I will say this, I know we're talking about drums, but if you're replacing the drum, there's a very good chance, probably 99.9% .9 chance, you're going to have to replace the brake assembly as well because the magnet's gonna be worn out and the shoes are gonna be worn to match the drum. So if we're replacing the drum, we're always going on with a new backing plate, no matter what size um, it is. Another way to tell is something I think we probably overlook. We don't see it a ton in drums maybe for some of our over the road guys that pull a lot you will see this more in the semi tractor trailer um, industry but it does happen we do see it on disc brakes i didn't have one of those to show today um, but we see heat cracking or heat checking checking is okay to a point cracking is not okay to any point if you have any cracking in there you're going to have to replace the drum um, it, it, it could actually separate the drum could come in two pieces so I'm gonna show you a couple ways to look for that. If you're looking on a drum like this, it's gonna be hard. I mean, there, there may be some checking in here. There may be even some cracking. It's gonna be hard to see in this just because of the wear on it. The, another place to look is around the rim. Go all the way around, look at the chamfer if there's any left to see if there's got any cracking. I don't see any on this. Um, another way to tell is an old trick. If you know what a bell sounds like, Hopefully the camera picked that up. So that's kind of a, a kind of a bell ring. 
This one, it's got a little ring, but hear that? This one's dead. This does have a crack in it. It has a crack in it because I cut it in half to simulate what a crack would be, but we do see cracks that severe sometimes. But unfortunately, a lot of times it's a hairline crack and there's so much brake dust and road grime and crap on it that you cannot physically see the crack. So it's a good idea when you pull one off, it's got a bunch of wear, just give it a ring. If it sounds like that, that dude is dead. Um, use it for something, make a boat anchor, trot line weight, whatever you need to do with it, or throw it in the scrap iron. So let's move back over to the new one and I'm gonna get one below that um, is a new one, but we simulated some heat checkering because I dug through the dumpster and I couldn't find one anywhere. So I'm gonna pull this one up. So I have drawn some lines. If you can see these right here, like I said, this is done with a Sharpie. So don't bang on me too much. This here would be a simulation of some checkering. And that is okay if it's very superficial and if the drum still is thick and has a lot of material. That's not uncommon. Um, that, that is to do from the brakes being heated up and cooled off, maybe going through water, maybe cold temperature. You can have some of that around. Sometimes it'll be all the way around the drum. That stuff is gonna wear off. It's okay. If you can find a shop that will resurface a drum, you could do that. I don't know of any around here. We have nobody um, that I know close to us that resurfaces these. If it comes to that point, we just replace. If you have cracking, something severe, you can see a line like we talked about in the edge. And if it looks more like this, if it's very dark, like I said, again, this is done with a Sharpie, but we do see cracks that look like this. They don't have to extend all the way through. They can be horizontal or vertical, but they will be deep. I mean, if you can feel it with your thumbnail or you know a small screwdriver, that dude needs to be replaced. This is cracking and this is checking. Rarely you'll see that here because the magnet is worn on this so much, it's hard to visibly see um, a crack in here. Again, look here, especially if you bought a used shredder where the seal goes in, if somebody's lost a bearing and that seal is not in there tight, just replace that. Same thing as we said for the dust cap, um, if it goes in there as well. Um, and I think I covered it earlier, but just always look at this. If, if your wheel gets loose and you've lost all eight studs, if you come to me and say, hey, I need eight wheel studs, I'm gonna tell you there's a 100% chance you're gonna need a drum. It is worn out the surface here. It is likely cut in to the surface there. And even if it's a little bit of rounding here, when you stick the new wheel on there and tighten it down, that thing is gonna come loose again. It's never gonna hold a proper torque. Um, it's gonna be a liability. It's gonna be dangerous um, to you and the traveling public, so don't chance it. We're gonna cover one other thing that I see when you know it's time to replace a drum, and this will be on your bearing packing. Um, when you pull it off, um, you see this one's got a race missing in here. I'm gonna go grab a race, and I'm gonna show you um, what not to do and what to look for on that, so I'll be right back. So this is very something very important to check as well when you're doing your bearing pack and checking your hub. Check your inner and outer races. You need to pull on them. You need to look at them to make sure they're tight. Just do not go off of a visual. Um, if there's any question on this, you know, drive it out. Try to drive a new one in there, but it should be tight. If you look at this one here, this looks fine. Um, we see them come in the shop like this. I've seen some other shops that I'm not going to name uh, do this right here just to get somebody by. And we'll talk about getting by here in a minute. But if you were to look at that, just by looking, it looks pretty tight, but you can wiggle it. I can actually pull that dude out. So there is a way to make this tighter. So I'm gonna show you the secret trick to do this. Then I'm gonna tell you to never ever do it. The only time ever to do this, if you're in the pasture and you need to get it to the barn, or if you're on the side of the road and you got a mile to go and you're gonna limp off the road at maybe two miles an hour, maybe fine. I see shops do this. I see you know, just the average public do this. It's crazy to do this and you can get somebody killed. So they'll take a center punch and they'll go in here, and it's gonna be loud, so I apologize. They're gonna go in and put a series of dings in here. Sometimes we'll drive a race out and we'll see this crap in there. If you have a shop that does this, I'm sorry. Um, tell your buddies to maybe go somewhere different. So they'll put dings all around it and make it magically get better. So now when you go put that race, 
well, I can't push it down any farther. So I'm gonna show you, so it, it would be tight. So now we're magically fixed, right? It's not loose anymore. You would have to drive that race back out of there to get it out right now. But if you put a bearing in that and get it on the road, it is gonna spin the race in the drum, gonna cause you to lose the outer bearing. You're gonna have a hub loss. Like I said, again, if you're, if you're doing the uh, out in the pasture repair or on the side of the road just to get you limp somewhere, that's one thing. If you're doing that just to keep running every day or some shop does that to keep running every day, it's not gonna run every day. It's gonna give it up and gonna get somebody hurt at some point. So I hope that tells you when to replace the drum. And again, most of the time, if you're gonna to have to replace the drum, more than likely you're gonna to have to replace the brakes. Some of these dudes are super expensive on these big 8K stuff right here. 7K is not so much, but as I say over and over again, and I think it's because we see it so much, what comes in off the road um, from other you know, repairs not done correctly and just wear and tear. It may be expensive now, but it won't be as expensive if it comes off and tears your trailer up or God forbid, um, hurt somebody or hurt you or damage somebody's property. So that's the things to look for, the very basics. Um, you need to do that every time you're doing a bearing pack. Anytime that drum comes off, you need to look at this. Even though you said, well, you know, a year ago it looked great. Well, that was a year ago. If you have a local trailer repair shop or parts shop, I'm always gonna tell you to go get your parts there, but sometimes you're far away from that. So I will leave some links in the description below for some drums. Some of these you can get online, some are a little harder uh, to get. So hopefully that'll be useful to you in case you're in a bind and need one. Um, remember, if you have any comments, leave those below. Um, just, just tell us what you wanna see. Tell us some, maybe the things that you've been through that maybe you need some help on. We've had some good feedback here lately. Um, give us a thumbs up, click to subscribe to catch up on any of our new videos we have coming out. Thanks for watching.